why are all prices going up? Why are wages going up? And why are other prices going up? And that's because of inflation. Who creates the inflation? The government, right? The government runs budget deficits. The Federal Reserve monetizes those deficits, prints money so the government can spend it. And now you have more money, so the money loses value and prices go up. That's what's causing wages to rise. That's what's causing other prices to rise. It's inflation. Chief economist and CEO at Euro Pacific Capital, Peter Schiff, discusses the real reasons why inflation will get worse and what that means for the economy, the dollar, and gold. He said, we are going to be in a very severe recession than anything we've experienced in our lifetimes. Inflation is worse than the government data suggests. This CPI uses a formula that understates the actual rise in prices. Here's more of what Peter had to say. But the reason they came up with this concept of a wage price spiral is to blame workers for inflation or to claim that inflation is somehow the price we pay for prosperity. Yes, we have this great economy and you're getting a raise and so therefore you have to put up with inflation. That's BS. Same thing with the cost price push, push saying, well, inflation is caused by rising costs. No, it's not. And again, costs are prices. One person's cost is somebody else's price, right? It, there's, there's no difference. And you can't say prices are going up because costs are going up. Costs are prices. And so prices don't go up because prices go up. They go up because the money supply is expanded. And who's doing that? It's the government. And even though the Fed has raised rates, you still have negative real rates. And we're not encouraging people to save. People are still borrowing as much as they can. The savings rate is near the lows. The credit card debt is near record highs. So the Fed's rate hikes have not really altered the spending and savings decisions, which I think are key to bringing the inflation rate down. So as long as people keep on spending, uh, I don't see any way we're going to get down to 2%. The real inflation is the expansion of the money supply. That's, that's what inflation is. A consequence of that is that prices go up. Now, does the CPI fully capture the extent to which aggregate prices are going up? I don't think so, and I think that's deliberate. I think the CPI was designed to uh, give you a low reading because the politics of the number, the government made it up. It's like a scorecard. Uh, on government policy, and obviously the government wants to get a good grade. And so the CPI was designed to make inflation lower, just like the unemployment rate was designed to be low, the GDP number was designed to be high. Uh, that's just how they created the methodology. But I think if you kind of double the official number, that's probably close to accurate. You know, I mean, it's obviously not precise, but I think you're a lot closer if you double whatever the CPI is. So if the CPI is two, it's probably four. If the CPI is six, which is what it is now, it's probably 12. They implemented a lot of changes uh, over the years, uh, particularly I think in the early 1990s. And they actually did that because they didn't wanna cut social security. But as you know, social security benefits are tied to the CPI through these COLA adjustments. And the idea was that if we can just make the CPI lower, then we won't have to raise Social Security payments as much. And so that's a way to cut Social Security is to pretend that we have lower inflation than we actually do. Now, they didn't come out and say that. They said that they thought the CPI was overstating inflation. And so they fixed it so it wouldn't overstate inflation but now it understates it. I don't think it ever overstated it. I think that was just a pretense so that they could you know, rig it so that it would have a lower number, which is what they wanted. That was the goal of redoing the CPI. But you know, if you took the CPI that we used in the 1970s, because people have done these numbers, just take the 1970 CPI and, and input the data that the government is using to calculate the current CPI. And if you do, the inflation that we had last year was worse than any year of the 1970s or 1980s. So this is the worst it's ever been last year. And you know, it's not getting any better. I think, you know, I think this improvement is transitory. We're gonna see higher numbers 
you know, probably by mid-year. We've been creating inflation for over a decade. All the years of quantitative easing put a lot of inflation into the pipeline. And the Fed has barely withdrawn that liquidity. I think we're still seeing the impact of that, and especially the inflation that it unleashed during the, the COVID pandemic. So I still think we have a ways to go to catch up. Meanwhile, government policy is still inflationary. We have very expansionary fiscal policy. The government is running enormous budget deficits. That's highly inflationary. I think when you have an inflationary environment, which is the one we're in, and if you look at inflation as a tax, which if you really get down to it, that's what it is. It's, it's a way the government pays for the deficits. It doesn't want to raise our taxes, so it prints money and it raises our prices. So the higher prices are basically the substitute for another form of taxation. So if you want to avoid the inflation tax, you avoid what's being taxed, which is U.S. dollars. So you want to get out of dollars, get out of dollar denominated bonds. And you know my advice is a portfolio of foreign equity stocks, real businesses, companies that own plant and equipment, resources that are hedged against inflation. You want to own businesses that can pass on their increased costs to the customer without losing a lot of sales. That's the problem. A lot of businesses don't have pricing power. And so when they have to raise their prices because of inflation, their customers stop buying their stuff. You know, But I want to own companies that sell goods and services that people have to buy. And they'll give up the things they don't need to buy the stuff they do need. So I want to own what they need, sell it to them and make some money. You also want to own commodities, uh, resources, whether it's metals, uh, oil and gas, agriculture, and the companies involved in those sectors are going to do well. You want to be in emerging markets because there's going to be an exodus, I think, from the U.S. and some of the developed markets uh, into the emerging market currencies, emerging market economies. They should benefit from weakness in the U.S. dollar. Of course, you know, you want to own precious metals. You want to own gold. Gold is a great asset. Gold and silver, they're monetary metals. When you have a lot of inflation, you have negative real interest rates, which is what we do. People are looking for an alternative store of value, a hedge against inflation. And you'll find that in, in gold and silver. And of course, uh, you can also invest in companies that mine gold and silver. They own a lot of deposits that are in the ground. They own those resources and they're able to extract those resources by mining them and they sell the, the, what, they, what they pull out of the ground and they make money. The higher the price of gold and silver, the more money they make. But the best thing to do to fight inflation would be not to raise the debt ceiling. Just leave it in place and pay our bills, cut spending. But nobody in Washington actually has the stomach for paying the bills. That's why they want to avoid that by raising the debt ceiling. But raising the debt ceiling will permit more debt, more spending, and more inflation. And that's where we're headed. There is no real wage price spiral. There never was. It was just kind of a concept invented by Keynesians. I don't know if it started in the 1970s or, or it was earlier than that. But they're saying that the reason that prices go up is because wages go up. And then wages go up and that makes prices go up and it's kind of like a spiral. <laughs> but you know, if you, if you think about it, wages are a price. Wages are the price of labor, right? It's, it's how much I have to pay somebody to get them to work for me, right? That's the price I'm paying to hire somebody. So wages are prices, right? I'm wondering how the markets are going to react. And so far, they've kind of been up and down. And maybe people don't really know how to react. But from my perspective, it's bad news for anybody who was really hoping that the, you know, the Fed has won the inflation fight. You know, Powell has been talking about disinflation. And from that you know, perspective, we have had numbers that have improved sequentially and on a year over year basis, but that was bound to happen. You know, when you had a rate as high as 9.1 or wherever we peaked out so far. But if you look at the rate of improvement this month, you know, the year over year number, I think was 6.4. That was down from 6.5 the prior month. So that's not much of an improvement. In fact, maybe this is the trough for improvements. Maybe in February, we're going to see an uptick in the year-over-year -year inflation numbers. And the monthly number was still a pretty big number. I think it was up, what, 0.5, 4%.
for January. That was a little bit higher than they thought. They upwardly revised the prior month, which was, I think, reported as down 0.1. Now it's up 0.1. So inflation is starting to turn back up. And I think we're going to start to see 